we are finally at the Dork Diaries finale. It has been a long journey. I've made two other videos recapping the series. If you haven't seen those, go watch them because we're really just gonna get right into it and you'll be a little lost. <laughs> there are currently 14 Dork Diaries books out there. I've recapped books one through 14 over the course of three videos and book 15 is coming out with no end in sight. I literally, I have no idea where this is going. Is it going to end right as Nikki gets into high school? Is it going to end right before college? Who even knows? because I feel like it could just go on forever and ever. <laughs> Am I complaining? No, not really. Actually, one of my favorite books of the series was in the last batch that I read. So before we actually really get into it, I'd love to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing, and illustration, but did you know Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? This year is the perfect time to reinvent your goals and yourself. I personally love teaching myself new things and thrive in classes where I can go at my own pace while gaining important skills. Skillshare gives you this opportunity to have greater control of your career and creative path. Recently, I found two classes that have been particularly helpful in achieving my goals of having better time management and self-esteem. The first one is called Productivity Today, Managing Attention in the Digital Age, taught by Kevin Siskar, where I learned a lot about understanding attention, minimizing distractions, and prioritizing my to-do list. It's been helpful because as a content creator and a student, it's important that I stay on top of my work and get organized. Another class that I loved is Confidence for Creatives, Five Exercises to Grow Your Confidence and Self-Care, taught by Eugenia Washington. In this class, I created a confidence kit, which has really helped with my self-image. I wrote a letter about the things that I want to release from myself and put it in an envelope to read when I'm older as a form of like letting things go. I also created an account of personal brilliance where I wrote about the skills and traits that I love about myself. I also created a pleasure playlist called Slay about the songs that make me want to boogie. No goal is too small. Thinking about our future can be intimidating, so we could start with baby steps. Maybe you want to start a personal brand style or learn new productivity tips. Skillshare teachers will take us step by step. The first 1,000 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Join now to explore the Skillshare class library and achieve a new goal. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the Dork Diaries finale. So Brandon and Nikki finally kissed at the charity event in a previous book. However, there's this rumor going around that Brandon only did that on a dare to get a bunch of free queasy cheesy pizza pizza coupons. And so then, remember in the previous book how Mackenzie slammed Nikki in the face with a dodgeball so hard that it induced fairy tale hallucinations? Well, she got detention for three days because of that and has to clean the bug-infested showers in the girls' locker room. So in French class one day, Mackenzie had a bug in her hair and because Nikki sits behind her, she had to take the bug out of Mackenzie's hair and the sight of said bug um, made Mackenzie vomit in front of the whole class. So then afterwards at the lockers, Nikki and Mackenzie get into a verbal scuffle because Mackenzie thinks that Nikki deliberately put the bug in her hair, which she didn't. And so Nikki yells back at Mackenzie, except it wasn't Mackenzie because she left mid-convo and it was actually Brandon. And so this started off another one of their classic miscommunications. Nikki said that that whole thing was a mistake and she was referring to yelling at him just then, but he thought she was talking about the kiss. So he got all sad and Nikki got all confused. And then later, Brianna was tasked with taking care of her class's pet goldfish, but she killed it when she gave it a bubble bath. So Nikki and her mom had to run to the pet store late at night in order to get a replacement. However, during this trip, she sees none other than Brandon with a queasy cheesy pizza in hand. Naturally, she freaks out because of the rumors that have been circulating, and so she, Chloe, and Zoe come up with the idea to call Queasy Cheesy and ask for Brandon's receipt to confirm if he bought the pizza using a gift card, and sure enough, he did. So obviously, this is irrefutable evidence that the rumors are true. So then, just after Nikki gets told that her Miss Know It All column is going to turn into this website, and she writes down the username and passcode in her diary, she loses it, and it falls into the hands of none other than Mackenzie. That's right, folks, we're getting a Mackenzie POV. So now Mackenzie is writing in the diary because naturally that's what one does when you find someone else's diary. You write in it yourself. From the get-go, we see that she has both mommy and daddy issues because they're always so busy and they never have time for her. God, the parallels between her and Chloe Bourgeois don't end. She reveals that she didn't just stumble across the diary. Um, It was actually safely tucked away in Nikki's locker, but Nikki's jacket prevented the locker from closing all the way, so Mackenzie reopened the locker, took the diary, and then closed the locker. She redesigned the cover of Nikki's diary with this leopard print fabric and then when she was reading all of the stuff that Nikki wrote before she was so outraged. She even wrote a list of 10 reasons why she hates Nikki. 10 reasons why I hate you. You cheated to win the avant-garde art competition. You totally ruined my birthday party by sabotaging the chocolate fountain. You competed in that talent show and landed a record deal even though your application was incomplete. Like who names their band? Actually I'm not really sure yet. You won the holiday on ice show and everybody knows that you can't skate. You tore the paper of my house. You tricked 
tricked me into digging through a dumpster filled with garbage in my desired dress at the sweetheart dance. You actually kissed my future boyfriend, Brandon. You pretended to be seriously hurt during dodgeball so that I would get detention, which by the way, could totally ruin my chances of getting into an Ivy League university. You put a nasty stink bug in my hair. I hate to say it, but like some of these points are valid. Like, don't get me wrong, she is a delusional queen, but like, who isn't? So when the whole bug in hair fiasco thing happened, someone took a video of Mackenzie's vomit freak out and this video was circulating around the school and now Mackenzie's popularity is plummeting. So she wants to transfer to this even fancier school called Northampton Hills International Academy. Then she finds the username and password to Nikki's Miss Know-It-All site and starts writing really nasty responses to people. She saved most of the files to be published at a later date, except for a few of them, one of which was to a girl who she thought was Marcy because she was all insecure about wearing braces and then Mackenzie made fun of her. And then the other was to a person she assumed was Brandon. And here's where she starts really messing things up. She tells Brandon to write a letter to the girl that he's having problems with and then ask her to meet her at like the cupcakery. And then when he taped the letter on Nikki's locker, Mackenzie stole it and so Brandon thought Nikki stood him up. And then a few days later, she put the letter back up on Nikki's locker and Nikki read it, went to the cupcakery. She thought he stood her up. It was actually genius if I'm being honest. However, the final straw for Mackenzie is when she got a Miss Know-It-All letter from who she assumed was her ex-BFF Jessica, asking if she should drop Mackenzie because Mackenzie is no longer popular and so she begs her parents to be transferred to Northampton. However, they say no because they don't think this bullying situation is that serious. If the video was posted online, then that would be another situation. And so Mackenzie decides to cyber bully herself by posting her own bug video online and then showing her parents. And then at that point, they agree to actually let Mackenzie transfer to the school. When Mackenzie is moving her stuff out, the moving guy accidentally drops the diary and then Nikki finds it and reunites with her diary after two weeks. So then Nikki reads the diary and starts trying to fix all of Mackenzie's messes. She runs into Brandon and said, OMG Brandon, I'm so sorry. I thought you were garbage when she threw a banana peel at him. And he said, yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. God, Brandon just really goes through it constantly. He has constant miscommunications with the girl he has a crush on. He's probably stressed because of all his responsibilities at Fuzzy Friends. And also in one of the earlier books, we find out that Brandon is an orphan and we just never come back to that. So Nikki starts telling Brandon about how Mackenzie's messing everything up and Brandon doesn't believe her at first. And since the whole cafeteria is staring at them, their convo gets cut short. Then Chloe starts icing Zoe and Nikki out for seemingly no reason. But eventually Chloe tells them it's because she got braces and she was scared of their reaction because of the nasty Miss Know-It-All letter she got. And Nikki's like, oh, that wasn't Marcy's letter. That was Chloe's letter. And then Nikki remembers all the letters that Mackenzie wrote and how they were about to be automatically published. And so she has to rush to delete them all. Luckily, she's successful. And then Brandon and Nikki make up somehow. And he invites her to the cupcakery to hang out after school. And so the next book begins with this very cupcakery hangout. Chloe and Zoe are also there too, but Brandon and Nikki are sitting together alone. But before Brandon and Nikki can share their second kiss, Mackenzie intercepts. Like literally, she got cupcake all over her face. Nikki and Mackenzie start getting into this verbal scuffle when some Northampton kids come over to the table and start talking to Mackenzie like she's Nikki. And so Brandon and Nikki realize that Mackenzie has stolen Nikki's identity in order to get friends, it would seem. And by stealing Nikki's identity, I mean she's telling all of these Northampton kids that she has this band and a hot boyfriend and all that stuff. Which I mean, fair enough for a self-proclaimed dork who has nothing going for her. Um, that statement couldn't be more wrong. Homegirl has great friends, a great boyfriend, a great family, wins every single competition she enters, has a band, got her own reality TV show. Anyway, Nikki didn't rat Mackenzie out out of the kindness of her own heart. And then Brandon and Nikki leave the cupcakery to go to Fuzzy Friends where they see a golden retriever with her seven puppies on the doorstep. And then Brandon is all sad because he can't take in the puppies because Fuzzy Friends is at full capacity. However, just then Mackenzie was eavesdropping on their conversation and pops in to say that she'll try and get Fuzzy Friends' license revoked if Brandon takes in these puppies. Why? I don't really know. However, Nikki threatens Mackenzie right back and says she'll tell all the Northampton kids that Mackenzie's a fake. So Nikki and Brandon decide to take care of the dogs, alternating them between each other's houses, and they'll even bring in Chloe and Zoe and others into the mix to help out. However, Nikki's the first to dog sit and her mom immediately says no, which throws a wrench into the plan. But because Nikki is a people pleaser at heart, she decides to take care of the dogs in her room without her parents knowing. She gets her parents out of the house for a while by sending them to the movies and then rings in the 
dogs. But since Brianna is home, she and the dogs get into a bunch of trouble. They pretty much destroy the house. So Brandon has to come over and help and somehow they make it through the day and night undetected. However, Nikki thought her parents would be gone the next morning because they were supposed to go on Brianna's class field trip, but it got canceled. So now Nikki has to figure out some other place to store the dogs. She decides to throw a blanket over the dog's crate, pretend they're books and bring them to school and hide them in the janitor's closet. But they make too much noise and so she brings them to the principal's office and the principal happened to be out for the day so it ended up working out. That is until at the very end of the day when Nikki was about to pick them up, the dogs got out of their crate, they caused a ruckus, the principal came back and then everybody ended up finding out that Nikki was storing dogs in the principal's office, including Brandon who had no idea about any of this. However, this guy named Max Crumbly stepped in and saved the day and took responsibility for all the dogs. He's from his other middle school called Southridge and the author of Dark Diary has created a spin-off series with him as the main character. But anyway, in the end, Nikki and her family ended up adopting one of the dogs and naming her Daisy. So then in the next book, there's this special event called Exchange Week where kids swap middle schools for a week, essentially. Chloe, Zoe, and Brandon are going to Southridge to hang out with Max Crumbly, but Nikki gets assigned to Northampton with Mackenzie. Nikki was going to try to do what she could to um, change the situation, get out of it, maybe even end up going to Southridge, but her French teacher tells her that he's recommending her for this French program where she would get to stay in France for a week during the summer. But it's sponsored by Northampton Hill, so now it's in her best interest to go and talk with the French teacher over there. Her student tour guide is named Tiffany, and she's like Mackenzie, except slightly less evil. She soon finds out that Mackenzie not only stole her identity, but gave Mackenzie's identity to Nikki, and so now everybody thinks that Nikki is some sort of evil queen bee type. So Nikki tells everyone she's not like that, which makes Tiffany super disappointed because she thought they were gonna be besties. And then Tiffany ditches her and Nikki ends up going with this group of science nerds who ask her to help them um, get more members for their club. Then Nikki runs into Mackenzie and they get into a verbal scuffle like they always do. Nikki says she's only here to get this Paris trip and Mackenzie says she's only here because her parents donated a lot of money to the school. And then Tiffany got that whole thing all on video. Then Tiffany frames Nikki for stealing this teacher's lesson plan book and this causes Nikki to spiral into a depression. She wants to leave Northampton immediately. The science club gets all sad, but before she officially leaves, she has another run-in with Mackenzie, except this one is more heartfelt. Mackenzie opens up to her about how she was really bullied at the beginning of this year, but then the bullying stopped once she pretended to be Nikki. Then Tiffany shows up and falls in a fountain and starts yelling these really nasty things at Mackenzie and Nikki and blaming them for the whole scenario. And then Nikki and Mackenzie get the whole thing on video, which sort of cancels out the blackmail video from earlier that Tiffany had. And then Nikki helped the science club recruit a bunch of new members by extending the outreach to girls as well. However, just when it's looking like Nikki and Mackenzie are gonna be frenemies, Tiffany writes Bug Girl on Mackenzie's locker and Mackenzie thinks that Nikki did it. So then Mackenzie requests a meeting with the principal of Nikki's school to get her expelled for cyberbullying when this TV crew comes in asking who was the one who posted the viral bug video of Mackenzie. And so in order to get the fame for that, Mackenzie takes all of the blame for posting her own video and cyberbullying herself. And then her fame from this whole TV extravaganza causes her to be popular at WCD again and so she transfers back to Nikki's school. In this next book, my favorite book, Brandon and Nikki are really taking strides. He offers to help train Daisy after school two days a week and Nikki offers to help him with his Fuzzy Friends website. School is ending soon and Nikki has a ton of fun plans coming up. She and her band, actually I'm not really sure yet, are supposed to be opening for this national bad boys tour and she might get to study abroad in France. Nikki gets chosen to be a student ambassador for exchange week like the one she participated in. She gets paired with a student named Andrea and they share a few uh, friendly emails. However, when the student arrives, Nikki realizes that she got it all wrong. It wasn't Andrea, no. It was Andre. That's right, folks, a new love interest has appeared. Looks like we got ourselves a classic love angle. Actually, I'm a fan of Andre because it means we get to see jealous Brandon. Turns out Andre has family in Paris and offers to show Nikki around if she ever goes to France. That could be exciting. Then he asks if he can call her Nicole because I guess like it's a more popular name in France. And Nikki's like, yeah, sure, because that's actually her real name. And so it's kind of like an anti-nickname. So then Nikki gets an email saying that she actually got accepted to the France program 
Instagram, except the dates conflict with the Bad Boys tour and now she has this really big conflict, like whatever will she do? So Nikki and Andre start hanging out all the time. He even steals Brandon's seat in bio and Brandon has to sit next to Mackenzie. Naturally, rumors start circulating that Nikki and Andre are dating. Then Nikki becomes aware of this social media account that's posting pictures of her and Andre making them look like they're a couple, but it's really Photoshop. Nikki's worried that Brandon will find out about this and freak out, but fear not, he's an oblivious lad. And he even asks her out to Queasy Cheesy. However, the next day in bio, Mackenzie shows Brandon the social media account and he gets super pissed. After class, Nikki keeps trying to talk to him, but he's like, no, Nikki, I can't, I'm busy. And then Andre comes out and he's like, hey, Nicole. And then Brandon's like, who's Nicole? <laughs> so then to solve this whole conflict, this whole issue, Nikki decides to write two letters, one to Brandon and one to Andre. Surely the letters aren't too ambiguous that if they happen to be switched, um, hypothetically, it wouldn't cause any more issues, right? The first one. Hi, please let me know what you think about the four picks. I think they're definitely going to get a lot of attention online. By the way, can we hang out later to talk? It's about something kind of important. Okay, very important. So important that I've been trying to tell you about it for the past week, but couldn't. It was hard finding the right time since we've both been insanely busy, so let's hang out this Saturday. Does 1 p.m. at Queasy Cheesy work for you? Shoot me a text and let me know. After the stressful week we've had, it'll be fun to just eat and chillax with you. Then the second one. Hi, I can't believe how fast this week went by. The good news is that you survived it. Now comes the awkward part. I wanted to let you know that I'm still thinking about what we discussed, and to be honest, I just don't know how I feel yet. Having to choose between two things I really care about is a lot of pressure. Half of me wants to stick with what's familiar and makes me happy, and the other half of me wants something new, adventurous, and exciting. I'm so torn. Maybe I'm afraid of disappointing people, or maybe I'm just scared of making a commitment. I'm going to need more time to figure stuff out. I hope you understand. When I make my final decision, I'll definitely let you know. Regardless of what I decide, I'd still like to be friends if that's okay with you. Hopefully I'll see you around at Nikki. P.S. Here is that gift card for a free queasy cheesy pizza. Enjoy. Yup. So Nikki runs into Mackenzie in the bathroom and she reveals to Nikki that she is the one behind the social media account and she's trying to get Nikki to go to France because Mackenzie wants to take her place on the bad boys tour. Nikki accidentally leaves her backpack in the bathroom with Mackenzie and so Mackenzie switches the letters without Nikki knowing. Who would have thought? So she delivers the letters and when she sees Brandon she realizes she can't spend a summer away from him. It's not even gonna be a summer away from him. It'll just be one week, but still. She's like, no, I've decided I'm going to go on tour with my crush. She goes to Queasy Cheesy for her date with Brandon, but Andre shows up as well, and then everybody is just really confused. Andre starts talking to Nikki about Paris, but Brandon didn't even know about Paris, and so he thought Nikki was rejecting him, and then he leaves, but before he can fully exit the doors, Chloe and Zoe come barging in and drag him back to the table. They start bashing Andre and show Nikki a picture of him with Chloe and Tiffany sitting together at the cupcakery and call him a two-faced rat. Andre tries to explain the situation to Nikki, but she won't have it, so then he gets all sad and leaves, but before he could fully exit, Chloe and Tiffany barge in and drag him back to the table. Tiffany accuses Andre of stealing her phone, and turns out he did, but it was to show Nikki the social media account and how Tiffany had been running it. Tiffany says to hand over the phone or she's telling mom, and he's like, no, I'm telling mom that you're cyberbullying again. That's right, folks, plot twist of the century, Andre and Tiffany are step-siblings. Then Mackenzie and Tiffany start fighting, and Tiffany Tiffany reveals that Mackenzie switched the letters and so Andre realizes, oh, Nikki actually doesn't like me and so everybody apologizes to everybody and everything's normal again. Then in the next book, it's officially Nikki's birthday month and her, Chloe, and Zoe want to throw this big luau themed pool party. Then one day, Nikki and her mom go to this yoga class and Nikki farts in front of everybody, including Mackenzie. That's not relevant to the plot, but just thought you should know. So the problem with this big party is that Nikki is broke and her mom had already been planning this low budget uh, backyard party with an accordion player and belly dancers. However, news about Nikki's big party starts circulating around the school and everybody wants to come. Then Brandon and Andre call at the same time and ask to be Nikki's date to her party and Nikki freaks out and hangs up on both of them. And then Nikki makes the spontaneous decision to go to France instead of the bad boys tour. Go team Andre! So then Nikki tells Chloe and Zoe that they have to tell everyone that the party is officially off, but then the invitations to Nikki's party get accidentally mailed out, so then they have to come up with something. Fortunately, Brianna ran randomly creates this um, very popular booming dog biscuit business. And this allows Nikki to come up with the money for her party, but don't even ask me about the logistics of this business because I don't even understand it myself. The party happens and it's a huge hit, except for the part where Mackenzie got Nikki suitcases for her trip to Paris, which she hasn't told anybody about yet. Everybody was really shocked, but still happy for her. So no harm, no foul. So then in a Romeo and Juliet-esque fashion, Nikki gives up her spot on the Paris trip to stay with Brandon and Brandon 
event in a uh, books a plane ticket to Paris. But in the end, they both decide on going on the bad boys tour so that they can be together for the summer. How sweet. Okay, y'all, we have finally caught up to the present. It is the most recent Dork Diaries book that is available. Let's get into it. Nikki missed her really important call with Trevor Chase to talk about the logistics of the bad boys tour. And so she thought she would get her band kicked off of the tour. But fortunately, she and her family got stranded pedal boating in the middle of a lake and Trevor Chase happened to be on a yacht cruising by and saved Nikki and her family. So then they worked out that Nikki is still opening for the bad boys tour, no harm, no foul. However, Nikki runs into Mackenzie and Tiffany at the mall and Mackenzie's talking about how Fuzzy Friends is gonna be turned into a parking lot when Brendan goes away on the bad boys tour. However, Mackenzie strikes a deal with Nikki saying that she'll talk to her dad about the Fuzzy Friends situation if Nikki lets her perform with her band for the last concert of the tour and introduces her to the bad boys. So Nikki begrudgingly agrees, at least they can enjoy themselves on the tour before Mackenzie arrives for the last concert. Psych. Mackenzie was hired as the social media intern for the whole tour and would be rooming with Nikki. Then Chloe, Zoe, and Nikki meet the bad boys. They have really good first impressions, really good times. However, Nikki is special because she has one-on-ones with each of the boys, becomes friendly with them, and encourages them to follow their hearts and do what they want to do because touring has been stressing all of the boys out. Then mid-tour, Brandon tells Nikki that the fuzzy friend's lease for their spot of land wasn't renewed. So Nikki goes to confront Mackenzie about all this because she was like, I thought we had a Deal and Mackenzie's like, change of plans. I want to perform on the televised New York concert instead. Nikki doesn't really want to do that, so she's about to reveal Mackenzie to Trevor Chase in front of everybody when a bigger issue arises. The bad boys are missing. Turns out they were all following Nikki's advice and taking some me time, so essentially this is all Nikki's fault. But here's the resolution the bad boys and Nikki's band performed in New York on TV. It was all great, it went really well. After that, though, the band went on hiatus for like a few months, I think, because the boys were all stressed out. Mackenzie never got to meet the bad boys or go on stage, but she ended up following through on her end of the deal and telling her dad not to make Fuzzy Friends a parking lot because when Nikki was about to reveal how Mackenzie was blackmailing her in front of everybody, Mackenzie texted her dad real quick and got the whole situation resolved. So Fuzzy Friends is saved and since the band is on hiatus, Nikki will probably be able to go to France. I'm assuming because of the cover of the next book, which I believe is set to come out in September, but I don't know. Anyway, that's what's been happening with Dork Diaries since you've stopped reading it. I, you know, I don't know how much longer the series will continue. I have truly no idea. There's no end in sight, it seems. <laughs> but, you know, it's still a fun time. And if you're ever curious about what's happening with the series, maybe I'll end up doing another finale recap when the series actually ends, but who knows when that'll be. Like, miraculous, I feel like I, I'm, I'm here indefinitely. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Hope you had a good time, and um, I'll see you next time.